Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting potted plants in a loose style. But before I start to paint, I'm going to draw out the pot so it's easier for me to paint the flowers and plants or trees inside these pots. And I don't have to worry too much about the distribution or the composition of this painting later on. I tried drawing different shapes and sizes, but this is something that you can customize to suit your composition. I just like doing simple pots so I can be a bit more colorful and detailed with the plants later on so it doesn't look too overcrowded. I'm also going to leave an outline of this in my coffee shop so you can download it if you would like to paint the exact same painting as what I'm doing here. Despite the many elements of this painting, each individual pots and plants are fairly quick and easy to paint but because there's just so many things going on, I don't think I'll be able to name every single step or every single color mixture here. You can say that I'd even classify this as a doodle because it's not exactly planned like my usual paintings. I just wanted to paint something colorful and loose and it's very much open to customization for the different plants or colors you can choose for your own composition. Here you can see me playing around with the size, shape, length as well as height of the pot so I get a fairly even distribution for the length of page that I have. You can even look up for references to paint different types of fun pots without the plants if you would like. I think that would also be fun to do but for this one I wanted to focus more on the flowers and the plants so I'm not going to be too detailed with my pots. I'm fairly happy with how I distributed the pots here and since I want the plants to sit comfortably inside the pots as I paint them later, I'm going to erase the openings on each of the pots to lighten the pencil marks and this way I can paint over it without worrying if the pencil would show through under the painting later on. Next here are the colors that I'll be using for this painting. We're going to start from the top. This is Burnt Umber by Holbein followed with Sepia by Holbein, Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Compost Blue by Holbein, Ultramarine Deep by Holbein, Viridian by Holbein, Terra Verde by Holbein, Aquarius Green by Roman Schmal, Hansi Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Jean Brilliant No. 2 by Holbein, and Chinese White by Holbein. I'll also be using Bleedproof White by Dr. Paige Martins. I'm going to begin by painting the flowers on the big pot. I'm using a mixture of Chinese White with Ultramarine Deep, and I'm just tapping with the tip of my brush, forming a circle so the edges and the insides are a bit uneven. This is supposed to form or suggest hydrangeas and I'm just going to do a few flowers on this pot to begin with. While the paint is still fairly damp, I'm going to add the ultramarine deep and I'm just going to tap it at the bottom portion of the flower. This is just going to blend with the rest so it's going to create an uneven surface where the bottom is slightly darker. Then I'm going to add on a little bit of Quinn Red and just tap this around the top section so there's more interest to the flowers with that touch of pink. Next, I'm mixing Aquarius Green with Hansi Yellow to create a muted yellow green and I'm going to use this to paint big leaves 
Again, I'm just tapping with my brush when I'm painting the edges of the leaves because I want the edges to be a bit jagged. I'm just going to paint a few leaves around the flowers to frame them first using this yellow-green mixture. As I'm painting the leaves, I felt like the left section is a bit empty so I'm just going to add another flower there using the same method. And this is something that you can keep doing as you're painting after you've painted the main flowers. You can just add on smaller flowers which are hidden behind the leaves if you would like to to fill in the space. For tighter areas, I also like to use a thicker consistency of just the Aquarius green to create a darker green. And I use this to paint the leaves which are hidden behind other leaves and flowers. And this just creates a bit more depth in your painting. As the surface is drying, I'm then going to follow up with a thicker consistency of the same green mixture with a bit more Aquarius green, and I'm just going to paint on some of the midribs on the larger leaves. Moving on to the next flower, I'm going to create an orange by mixing Hansi Yellow with Quin Red. You can also just use any orange color mixture you have. And for this, I'm going to use the tip of my brush and twirl it around and this will then create random circular shapes to depict the shape of roses and once I've done a few I'm going to follow this up with the same green mixture with added quin red to warm up the green further and I'm just going to paint the stems and the leaves with this green. Once the surface of the flower is drying but not completely dry, I'm going to add the same mixture at the center of each flower. So there's going to be a slight gradation going from a dark orange to a light orange. Then I'm going to follow this up with a dark green mix from Aquarius Green with Sepia and darken some areas behind the leaves again to create depth and suggest higher density of the plants. For the next flower, I used a mixture of Chinese white with compose blue and I'm just using the tip of my brush to create tiny clusters of flowers and at the bottom I just use the compose blue by itself to create a little bit of gradation so the bottom is a bit darker than the top. While I wait for the blue flowers to dry I moved on to the next plant which I just used the same yellow green mixture with added Hansi yellow at the tip of the leaves and this is just going to be a bush of some sort. I'm also going to use the same dark green mixture and dot it all around to again create a bit of depth. Going back to the blue flowers again, once they're dry, I'm using the same dark green mixture and I'm just painting tiny leaves and tiny stems. I'm going to add another bush for the horizontal planter, but this time I'm varying the green by using Terra Verde as the base green, mixed with Ultramarine Deep to darken the color and Hansi Yellow to lighten it. And I'm just going to alternate those two color mixtures in a thick consistency while dotting the leaves around using the tip of my brush. Next, you guys know I love painting lavenders, which is what we're painting next. For the purple, I used a mixture of Quin Red with Ultramarine Deep and Chinese White to make the color a bit more pastel. And I'm just going to play around with the ratio of those colors I used for the purple in order to create different tones of purple for the lavender. I'm going to wait for the lavenders to dry, so meanwhile I'm going to go back to the horizontal bush. I'm using bleed proof white and I'm going to paint tiny 5 petaled flowers on the dark bush. This is why I wanted the bush to be dense and painted in a thick consistency before so the white can contrast the green. However, you can always go back in with the dark green in certain areas to make those flower shapes more clear. 
Now I'm going to wait for the white to dry and go back to the lavender. I used whatever green mixture I had left on my palette. It doesn't really matter too much and I'm just painting the stem. As for the leaves, I painted small simple lines. And again, I used my dark green mixture to add density to the plants, which is something that I'm going to do for all the plants that I'm going to paint today. Next flower I'm going to paint are tulips and I'm creating a pink using Quin Red, Chinese White and a little bit of Hansa Yellow I had left on my palette. I'm just going to create those tulip shapes. As you can see I'm not too worried about being accurate with the shapes because it's just supposed to suggest those shapes. And I'm also mixing the colors a bit by adding more Hansa Yellow in the ratio just to add a little bit more color combination. I'm going to follow this up by using the dark green mixture to paint the stems and then I'm going to follow this up with any of the yellow green mixture. You can use Aquarius green or Terra Verde as your base green and I'm going to use that yellow green to paint the leaves. I painted the leaves quite long and large for this one but I'm still going to follow this up with the dark green which I'm going to add behind the leaves that I've initially painted especially around the bottom section near the rim of the pot. The white flower should be dry by now so I'm going to follow this up with a thick consistency of Hansi Yellow and I'm just going to paint the center of the flowers. For the next flower, I'm going to paint the same light blue flowers as before so I'm just going to use the same mixture of Compost Blue with Chinese White to paint the flowers but this time I'm going to make them a bit viney and trickle down the pot. Then I follow this up with Terra Verde by itself to paint the viney stems as well as the leaves. I try to incorporate a few curls to play with the texture of the plants and then I follow this up by adding Ultramarine Deep with a bit of sepia to the green to create a dark green which I use to fill in the gaps within the pots. The next plant I'm going to paint is a small olive tree. I used burnt umber by itself to paint the branches and I'm going to follow this up with a bit of sepia to darken certain parts just so there's a variety of colors for the branches. As for the greens, I use Aquarius green as the base and I'm just going to alternate the mixtures with added Hansi yellow to lighten the green or with added sepia to darken the green. As for the olives, I used Lamp Black by itself to paint tiny ovals near the leaves and the branches. I'm going to paint another tree on the larger pot. This time I'm going to paint a lemon tree. I started with burnt umber again for the main trunk and branches. I also made this one a bit thicker compared to the olive branch to support the larger fruits. Then I'm going to paint on a few lemons using just Hansi Yellow by itself. Then follow this up using a mix of Hansi Yellow and Aquarius Green to paint larger leaves in comparison to the leaves that I've painted on the olive tree. I started by painting the leaves on top of the fruits that I painted so there's a connection between the fruits and the leaves. Then after I've painted the leaves using the yellow green mixture, I'm going to follow this up with a mix of Viridian with Sepia to make the green a bit more muted and deeper and I'm going to paint more leaves so there's a variety of color and while I paint this, I'm going to smudge certain areas while layering the colors so the leaves look a bit more dense. I try to also paint around some of the lemons using this dark green mixture to make the yellow pop up against the dark green in comparison to having them next to the white of the paper or the yellow green. Along the way, you can add more fruits, then I'm also going to add sepia to the branches just like before with olive branches. Going back to painting flowers, I'm going to paint very loose pink dahlias using a mix of Quin Red with Jean Brilliant and I also added Burnt Umber to mute the bright pink and I'm 
just going to dot the paint around using the tip of my brush but I try to have the tip of my brush rotate radially in comparison to the random angles that I created while I painted the hydrangeas. I follow this up by painting thicker stems and leaves using the same yellow green mixture and I'm also going to use the pink mixture again to darken the center of the flowers. While painting these flowers I realized that I made them a bit too big so just be mindful of that while you're painting if you're going to recreate this. Moving on to the next flower, I'm going to paint blue delphiniums. I'm going to use the same color mixture as what I used for the hydrangeas with ultramarine deep and white. Then I'm going to just dot the bottom and the top parts of the flower with ultramarine deep by itself while the light blue is still a bit damp. For the stem, I used Aquarius green with sepia and then I used the yellow green mix to paint the large leaves. There's one more tiny pot left. For this, I use Queen Red with Jean Brilliant and I'm going to just dot tiny flowers. Then I'm going to use Terra Verde to paint tiny leaves around the pink dots. After looking at the lemon tree again, the dark green looks faded after it dries and this made the painting look a bit flat. So I'm going to layer on the same dark green mixture to increase the contrast and value. I wanted to make the composition a bit more full and lush, so I decided to fill in some gaps using different green mixes that I have on my palette. And I just paint on different leaf textures at the back of certain pots to increase the height of some of the plants. I'm going to paint three different types of pots. The first one that I'm painting is terracotta. I used a mixture of Quin Red with Hansa Yellow with a tiny bit of green that I had left on my palette to mute the orange slightly. And you can also play with different ratios so the color of the pot doesn't look too flat. As for the soil of the tree, you can use a mix between burnt umber and sepia depending on how dark or light you want the soil to be. You can also add Quin Red to make the soil have a red tone or hands a yellow to make it a bit more yellow brown. Here for the pot on the right, I added John Brilliant just to change up the tone of the orange slightly. Then I used any brown mix to add detail to the pot. Next, I'm going to paint concrete pots. I just added more Jean Brilliant to the terracotta mix and also added white with a little bit of sepia to mute the color. Or you can also use buff titanium, which is a bit lighter than the color that I mixed here. The next type of pot that I'm going to create is wood with iron to hold the wood together. So for the wood I use Hansi Yellow, Quin Red, Burnt Umber and also a bit of sepia to darken the brown. And I'm going to paint lines while leaving a bit of white negative space in between each plank of the wood. If you would like the wood to be lighter, you can add more Hansi Yellow to your mix or use the sepia. So adjust to create the tone of brown that you would like. Here I drew out the lines with pencil a bit too close so I just painted over the whole thing. But you'll see the slight difference in texture as I add sepia to those lines with a bit of the white negative space versus the one that I painted fully. I just find that the painting looks a bit more flat when I painted the wood fully because the sepia lines just look like flat outlines instead of added value to the form and gaps between the wood. For this tiny one, I'm going to create a green jar with Aquarius green in a light consistency. And while the paint is still a bit damp, I use the wood brown from the planter behind it so it looks transparent. And along the sides, I added a thicker consistency of Aquarius green to add to the 3D form of the green glass.
Here I added shadows to some of the pots from the plants or the pots which are behind certain plants. I used a darker version of the same pot color with added ultramarine deep so the pots and the plants interact with each other in the composition as a whole instead of just sitting there individually. For the metal of the wooden planters, I just used lamp black so I'm just going to color it in for the rest of the planters. You can leave the painting here if you would like a cleaner composition, but I want this to look like a line of plants in a garden, so I'm going to add cast shadows using a mix of ultramarine deep and sepia, and I'm also going to add brick textures using the same terracotta mix in a thinner consistency, and also add more plants behind the pots to bring the painting together. And lastly, to add a doodle feel to this painting, I'm also going to use my sepia pen to line some of the unclear elements and also use bleed proof white to add small details like screws on the metal part of the planter and also highlight to the glass jar. And that's it for this painting. This was so much fun to put random blobs of brush strokes with different colors to create colorful plants. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!